Good morning, everyone. Boys and girls, I'm led to believe that was your first time doing, doing that. Is that right? Well, that was absolutely fantastic. I think the boys and girls need a round of applause for that this morning. That was brilliant. <laughs> boys and girls, you know what to say. If you do something too well, you'll be asked to do it again. But if you do it again, you'll do a top job. That was absolutely brilliant. But it's lovely to be back here uh, with you this morning. I was here back with you, my first time with you uh, here this morning in Brannockstown. I have been down uh, this part of the world before, but it's been a little while from I've been here. Uh, last time I was down was actually down with, with David and Hannah just before they moved uh, off to, to France. So that was back uh, a little a little while ago. But it's lovely to be here uh, with you today. And even though it was raining, it was still a nice drive down. I'm from Cookstown, by the way, in case you're wondering. Uh, it's not a local accent. It's from, from up north. Um, so it's, uh, it's lovely to, to be down, down south here with you uh, today uh, to share in your service. Really this morning I want to begin by showing you some pictures of some really famous buildings and structures to see if you can guess uh, where it's, guess what they are. Okay, now I know it's early, I know it's Sunday morning, we're maybe still not quite awake yet, so these aren't going to be too difficult for us. Okay, these are for boys and girls and, and the big people as well. Whoever thinks they know uh, what it is can uh, put their hand up and have a guess. Now, the first one is going to be uh, pretty simple, so you shouldn't, have any, you shouldn't have any problems here with this one. Can anybody guess what that building is? Uh, yep. Yeah. The Eiffel Tower, let's see. Yeah, the Eiffel Tower. And pa Has anybody ever been to the Eiffel Tower? Any of the big people ever been to the Eiffel Tower? You know what? I booked in to see the Eiffel Tower about three years ago, and I booked it the one day that Paris was closed to cars, and I couldn't even get in to see it. Isn't that very disappointing? Was it, was it nice? Was the Eiffel Tower good? Those have been okay. Okay, so the Eiffel Tower. The next one. Anybody know what that big building is? Okay, we'll go again. Yep, yeah. that is Buckingham Palace. Yes, absolutely. Has anybody ever been to Buckingham Palace for a wee tour around or anything? There's a few few has been. Uh, let's see what the next one is on our screen now. We ought to know what that one is. Uh, yes, it's Dylan, isn't it? That is the White House in Washington, D.C. Who lives in the White House? The president. The president. Well, he lives there for now anyway until the, next, until the next election comes and then he might have to move out. Who knows? Who knows what way that will go? Okay, next one. This one might be a little bit more challenging. Does anyone know where that is yet? Yeah. That is the Coliseum. I thought that might have been a wee bit trickier, but I think you, 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 a few of you knew that one. That's the Coliseum in Rome. Who's been to that one? Anybody been there? That's very good. There's a few people who's been to that. Okay, so there's four. There's one more I want to show you and see if you can tell me where this one is or what this one is. Yeah. The Leaning Tower of the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Yeah, that's, that's probably a better name, actually. The Leaning Tower of Pizza. That is the Leaning Tower of Pizza. Pizza in, in, in Italy. And uh, has, has, has anyone seen that one before or anyone been? Oh, There's quite a few. You know what? I, w I was putting all these together and I, and I realized that I haven't actually been to any of these places. And it's just really, really sad. Well, I was almost made it to the Eiffel Tower, but not quite because they closed Paris down uh, for, for that day. So here we've looked at some really famous. Uh, buildings and, and structures from across the world and some of you, many of you have been uh, to these places but there's one big difference we see in these buildings, one that really stands out as different to the rest. Has anyone any ideas which one really stands out as a little bit strange? Yeah, yeah the Leaning Tower of Pizza, that's right. Yeah, so why is, why is it different? What's different about it? It's leaning this way to the side, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. The Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, it looks different from the rest because it looks like it's falling over. It looks like it's about to collapse onto the ground, doesn't it? 
And it's said that over many centuries from it was built, and it was, I think they started to build this back in the 1100s, so that is many, many centuries ago. That is before any of us uh, were, 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 were born, well before that. And it's been falling very gradually ever since that time. Every time it was measured, it looks like it's about to collapse. But of course, there are many smart people, engineers, architects who have done many things to make sure it doesn't fall, uh, it doesn't fall over. But the reason it began to fall in the first place was because it was built on soft ground. It was like a kind of a muddy, sandy, kind of a clay kind of mixture. And as the foundations of the tower began to settle on this soft, unstable ground, the tower then began to go this way, or whatever way it went. It started to, to fall over to the side. So clearly, it doesn't really matter how nice or how interesting the building or structure may be. If it's not built on solid ground, well, then it's going to fall over if nothing's done about it, isn't it? The foundation on which a house or a building is built upon is the most important thing. Well, these verses that we were read to us so, read to us so well uh, from Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is drawing towards the end of what we know as the Sermon on the Mount. And he speaks about two builders who are building two houses, one that would stand and the other that wouldn't. And he's dealt with quite a few things already here. He spoke uh, in, the, in, the, in the verses beforehand, he spoke about the narrow way and the broad way. So the narrow way is those who, who trust and follow Jesus. The broad way is those who, who reject Jesus and, and, and go uh, their own way. Jesus also speaks about two different trees. He speaks about a healthy tree that produces good fruit and a diseased tree that produces bad fruit. That is, those who are trusting Jesus will, and following him will produce good fruit, but those who aren't won't because they don't know Jesus. Well, now Jesus comes on to speak about these two builders. One builder who opted to build his house on a solid foundation, on the rock, and then a foolish builder who opted to build his house on soft unstable foundation which was the sand uh, every time I, I, I read these verses that that children's hymn uh, comes to mind i was thinking i wonder was it going to be sung maybe this morning the the wise man built his house uh, upon the rock as a, a flashback to my, my sunday school days and many other people's sunday school days as well no doubt but the contrast jesus is making here is between those who hear what he says and actually obeys him and those who hears what he says and doesn't. One is building on a firm foundation and the other isn't. One will stand and the other won't. So this morning, very simply, I want to look uh, together with the boys and girls, with the big people, at these contrasts uh, between these, these two builders and the foundations that they're building on. Now, clearly, foundations are important. I remember a good number of years ago, whenever I was building a garage, at my house, uh, the house that I lived in previously, the, the ground that I was building on was quite soft. Uh, there was a lot of soil, uh, a lot of fill on it. And uh, so we had to dig very deep down uh, into the ground to, to, get, to get solid foundations. And I remember standing in these tracks that the digger dug out, and they were taller than I was. And I was thinking, do they really need to be that deep? Because after all, I have to pay to put concrete in these things. So I was thinking maybe more about my, about my pocket more than anything. But of course, for my garage not to end up looking like the leaning tower of pizza or pizza, I had to ensure that the foundations were solid, that I was building on solid ground. That was the wise thing to do, although it was more expensive at the time. The foolish thing would have been to just go ahead and to build on the soft ground, wouldn't it? Well, spiritually speaking here, it matters much, much more where we are building our lives. Much more than building any garage or any house or, or any structure that we could think of. Because there's only one place where we will be able to stand and not fall. You see, the houses in this story that Jesus is telling represents our lives. The foundation which we are building our lives is the most important thing. And Jesus gives us two options. He doesn't give us three. He doesn't give us four. 
He gives us two options where it will be that we will build our lives, either on the solid rock, which will remain firm, or else on the unstable, sandy ground, which will lead to ruin. So the important question that we need to ask ourselves today, boys, girls, mum, dads, big people, is what foundation am I building my life upon? You see, to build our lives upon the rock is to build our lives upon Jesus Christ himself. Having him at the center of our lives, listening to what he tells us through his word, and then obeying him. That's what Jesus says in verse 24. He says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. But then the contrast is in verse 26, Jesus says, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. So what do we notice here between these two contrasts? Well, I wonder, did you notice that everyone in the story hears Jesus' words? They they hear what Jesus has been saying. After all, Jesus has just preached a, 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 a huge sermon, the Sermon on the Mount. He's instructed them many things. But Everyone hears what Jesus says, but those upon hearing him, there are those who who obey and those who don't. The wise man obeys and the foolish man doesn't. And as a result of hearing Jesus' words and actually obeying them shows that we are building our lives upon Jesus, upon the solid rock, the most firm and stable foundation that we could ever, ever imagine building our lives upon. And the result of this is verse 25. Jesus says, And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. But then there's that, that contrast here of hearing Jesus' words and not obeying them. It's the exact opposite. Jesus says, The rain fell, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat, the, beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. It's always helpful for us to have uh, an illustration, isn't it? Now, I've brought some things with me today. Um, uh, in fact, I've been designing a couple of my own buildings. Uh, you can tell me in a wee minute if you like them or not. Both are exactly the same, but very built on very different foundations. So we need to put them to the test, okay? So have, have I got somebody to come up and give me a little bit of help? Hold on, I bring my box over and let you know what you're gonna be doing, first of all, and then you can maybe decide. Okay, so what's in here? So we have a house. Can you, everybody see my house? And there's one that is built on the rock or built on the brick. In this case, I'll be going to the chair over with me. Let me leave it there. And set this up. So, what I need, I have got, I've got my floods and I've got my rain right here. Okay, what I need is someone to provide me some wind. Who's got, who's got, who's full of air? Who's full of air this morning? Okay, well, tell you what, why don't you all just come? You could all just come up and blow as well, couldn't you? Right, let's try the, the house that has been built upon the sand, okay? Try this one first. Three, two, one, go. Ah, no. It's fell down flat. That's no good. Right, what about the one that's built upon the rock? Are we trying to knock that one down? Right, three, two, one, go. Are you not blowing hard enough? I thought you said wind. You blow harder, right? Found it on pretty solid ground, isn't it? It's not going to move at all. Thank you very much, boys and girls, for, for helping me to go and sit down again. Yeah, that one's well right over, isn't it? Yeah. Well, that's what it says. It was great, was the fall, wasn't it? But that shows us clearly, boys and girls, and, and mums and dads and big people, that the house that is built upon the rock will stand no matter what comes its way. Or to put it another way, that the house or the life that is built upon Jesus Christ and his word will stand no matter what comes its way. That means through the storms of life, through the hard things, through the trials that come our way, because we all face those, 
And although they're not easy and they can maybe leave us like we're feeling like we're about to fall, just like that uh, Tower of Pisa, they will never destroy us because our lives are built on an unshakable foundation. We don't just hear what Jesus says, but we listen and we follow him. Whenever that's the, the case, we can have the confidence to say along with uh, the, the psalm writer as was read to us so well a few minutes ago from Psalm 62. And listen to this again. The psalmist says, he is the, the only, he only is my rock and my salvation. My fortress, I shall not be shaken. On God rests my salvation and my glory. My mighty rock, my refuge is God. You see, when our lives are built upon Jesus, we cannot ultimately be shaken. Whenever we're living in obedience to him, following him, we're following the one uh, who, has, who has saved us, who has given us life. He is the solid foundation on which we stand. But maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're even listening back at a, at a, at a later point. And you would have to say the foolish man in the story here perhaps describes you because you've heard, uh, you've heard uh, what Jesus has said on many occasions, yet you've refused uh, to obey that, to obey what he said. You've maybe heard what the Bible has said on many occasions, maybe even in this building week in, week out, but yet you haven't heeded that instruction to, to turn from your sin first and foremost and to turn to Jesus. If that describes you this morning, the Bible would, would show us that you're building your life on a foundation that will never stand. And it's a pointless exercise because this story which Jesus is telling here actually points beyond this life, points to the day when we will all stand before God someday. And no one will be able to stand on that day unless their foundation is on Jesus Christ. This is the, the old hymn says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. I wonder, can you say that this morning? Is that true of your life? If not, you need to hear these words this morning, the words of Scripture, the words of Christ, and respond first and foremost but in obedience by turning from your sin and trusting in Jesus. But you know, even as Christians this morning, no matter what age we are, whether we're a boy or a girl who, who knows Jesus, whether we're a big person, we all need reminded that call to follow Jesus on our li in our lives. He died for us on the cross that we could be forgiven from our sin, reconciled to God. He rose again, defeated death, and because of that, one day we too will rise. Not even death can hold us as Christians. That free gift of salvation which he offers to us in his grace, which we have received through faith alone, in Christ alone. But remember what Jesus said to his disciples before, descend, before ascending back into heaven. He says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe or, or to obey all that I command you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Clearly, as Christians, we have work to do. Following Jesus and then teaching others to do likewise. It's very easy, I think uh, we, we could all admit, to, it's very easy to get caught up uh, in the things of this life, to, uh, to get caught up in maybe even good things that we forget the bigger picture. But we want to be those who are faithful to Christ, who obey him and who are striving to follow him. Uh, in every area of our lives, not like those who, who James speaks of, who are hearers of the word uh, and not doers, those who deceive themselves. Or as Jesus puts it here, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like the wise man who built his house upon the rock. Although we, we may fail on many occasions to do this, well, we keep running back to Jesus, don't we? Because he's the one who has declared us righteous already on behalf of what he has done for us. He is the solid rock on which we stand. And we can be confident that although at times we may stumble and mess up and get it wrong, if we are in Christ, we will stand because we have been founded 
upon the rock. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. We'll leave it there for this morning and hope and trust that uh, those thoughts have been uh, helpful and, and a blessing to us.